All right. Well, we're gonna get started working on this 9410, but before we do that, we're gonna throw the drone up. Well, we got a little bit of snow here now. And uh, everything has got a beautiful blanket of whiteness here. This is the first uh, measurable snow that we have had that we have had to actually plow snow. We had a little bit of snow here before uh, Christmas time and it was only a couple of inches and it was gone. Uh, it was gone in a couple of days and this will probably be gone in four or five days. So we'll go ahead and throw the drone up quick and then we'll get working on this 9410. All right, so we'll just do a little fly over here to kind of show you what things look like all covered in snow. Andrew is plowing with this 8320. Jared put the blade on it here last night. And Andrew's been out plowing snow since 3.30 this morning. He's actually over plowing, uh, plowing my father's house driveway out. And um, him and my nephew were plowing driveways since early this morning. Um, we have a snow pusher that we have mounted to our back. All that sets in front of uh, the parlor. So we'll just kind of do a little fly over here. We've got about six inches of snow and um, everything looks nice, all covered in white. We'll just kind of swing over the top of the hay barn. You can see Andrew's got the bunks cleaned out. Just a little fly over here. They've got a skid steer out in behind the barn that Nate is changing the tire on right now. We'll fly out and spy on him for a second and do a flyover of the rest of the farm here. And then we'll get working on the uh, 9410. You can see he's pushing a jack down in underneath there. <laughs> uh, I lost reception to the drone. I got to wait for it to get back up in the air. I think I might have crashed it. There we go. Yeah, um, I lost... <laughs> we're gonna cancel return to home all right so um i am sitting in front of the shop in my truck right now and the um we ran out of range with the antenna so there's nate right there changing that tire we'll do a fly over of everything We'll circle around the barns and uh, get the drone back down on the ground and get working on that 9410. We have to replace thermostats on that 9410 uh, the other day it wanted to do a regen however it had boarded itself from that a couple of different times and the engine temperature was too low and Jake kind of thought that we would need to do thermostats on it so that it could get up to a warmer temperature Andrew he's over here uh, he's helping his grandmother get vehicles moved or what I got a little funny story here for you it was back when Jared was I don't know he must have been 10 11 12 years old and 
he was out plowing snow and it got to the point where he had all the barn driveways done and he went over to my father's house and my father says to my mother, oh, look at this. You're going to get a couple of new garage doors. Then Jared pulls up to the garage door, takes the tractor from forward right to reverse, backs the snow away from the garage doors and continues plowing. So my father, he says, I'll go out and ride with him for a second. And Jared goes to pull up to the garage door again. There was a at 8120 on the uh, um, blade. He got the 8320 now, same blade. So he pulls up to the door again, and my father says, You sure you know what you're doing? Yeah, why? And uh, puts takes the tractor from forward, goes right to reverse with it. Starts, you know, backing up. So... He, they get the, he gets the driveway plowed out, and my father calls me. He says, I don't know if I'd have him plowing snow. He's not even using the clutch. I said, well, you're really not supposed to use the clutch on these power shifts to uh, change gears like that. It's just, a, it's just a pedal there for looks, really. And uh, he says, I don't know. <laughs> well, you don't have to use the clutch on these um, power shift transmissions. You can just take it out of gear, give it a second, go right back into, um, you know, reverse if you're going forward or vice versa. So he is moved up in front of the parlor looks like he's going to make another swing around everything and i need to get this drone back on the ground and get some work done in the shop so i am going to get this thing landed so we'll get into the shop and start working on this 9410 All right, so we are draining the coolant out. And we've got some guards and stuff already removed from this side here. We need to get to the thermostat housing, which is right there. So I've got to take some other stuff off. Then we'll get into it. Hopefully this goes rather easy. It should. And uh, we can get this back together, get the coolant in it, back it outside, let it get up to operating temperature, and then run it through a parked regen. And hopefully, yeah, hopefully we can get it to do what it's supposed to do here. All right, so we have everything removed here. We can just start pulling the bolts out of the way and get this thermostat housing pulled away so that we can go ahead and pop these thermostats out. I had a heck of a time getting this elbow tube off. There was rust that had built up in between all oh, the metal and the o-ring and boy it made itself real tight. I keep track of our bolt length. short and we've got medium no 
the heck am I doing here? This long. This is short. For some reason. It looked as though that one bolt was a little longer. Yeah. So there's just one long bolt. <clears throat> yeah, one long bolt. Now, when we go to separate this, we've got to just pull this outer cover. We don't want to pull the inner part, which it looks as though that might separate as well. that's the case I've got a fitting in behind there that I'm gonna need to take loose oh prepared as I thought. So it didn't look as though that fitting was part of it back here. So let's get a wrench in there and take that loose. And it's going to swing around over to there. fitting taken off loose I would feel better if I had that line right out of there Okay, so we've got that line removed, which I didn't originally see that that was going to be a problem. So we've got the thermostat housing sitting over on the bench. We'll just have to clean this surface area up. Uh, originally, I didn't see that that line, I didn't think it was going to be a problem. I thought the thermostat housing wasn't as thick as what it was. So we've got the thermostat housing on the bench. We'll just pop these thermostats out, clean this surface area up, throw the new ones in, and just reassemble it. Yeah. All right.
All right, so we have our surfaces cleaned up where the thermostat housing is gonna bolt to the block or the head rather. We could show you that over on the bench. We've got the thermostat housing as well cleaned up. Now I had a heck of a time pulling these elbows out. One goes from the water pump up to this thermostat housing. I had a heck of a time getting that out because it was all, all there was rust built up underneath the O-rings that had them swelled and it caused them to, well, it caused them to swell and I could not pull that apart. We've got that apart now. I had that apart or that elbow off of there when I took this water pump or when I replaced this water pump some time ago. And I said, you know what? That might need to be replaced again. Now would be the time. We've got the coolant out of it. And yeah, now would be the time. So I looked it up. We changed this water pump in 19, March of 19. It has 6,000 hours on it. They say to change these between four and 6,000. Just because the bearing could go and then it'll start slowly dumping coolant into the base. And once that bearing goes, it locks the gear up and you end up ruining all of, all of your gears on the front of the engine. So what we're going to do now is we are going to run after this water pump. We're going to take this one off, take this one in as a core, put that on, then we'll put our thermostat housing on. I should have been thinking when... Uh, we ordered the parts for the thermostats here. We could have had the water pump at the same time, but I just wasn't thinking. And it seems like it was just yesterday that we replaced this water pump. So we're going to go ahead and get that off of there and get another one back here. All right. So we've got everything taken up loose on this water pump. Two bolts at the top that hold it in. We've got our lines unhooked. Radiator hose is unhooked. We had a sensor in here that we pulled out. Um, there's bolts on the front of it that go through this timing cover. I think I've got all of them removed. I've got one that I'm going to leave in. Break it loose here. I'm assuming I got them all. Should break free. Was worried that we were going to have to remove this drain tube off of the turbo but I didn't remember taking that off last time but uh, yeah we've got that off of there we just need to remove the fittings 
out of it. We've got three of them. Maybe we should take that plug out too. And then we will go over to Deer and pick up the replacement. All right, we are back here with a water pump. This guy in there. There. So we have our water pump all in place. We've got the housing cleaned up for the, the thermostat to bolt to, or the head rather. So we've got the housing cleaned up. We've got a nice gasket put into place with the thermostats loaded into it. So we'll get that mounted. We can get the rest of it buttoned up and then we can get forward into this.
Well, alrighty. So we've got this all buttoned up. New water pump, new thermostats. However, that top radiator hose right there, I think we might have to replace. We were getting the coolant poured in and started leaking down through this one side. I loosened the clamp up, turned the clamp around a little bit, retightened it, tapped on the clamp with the end of a screwdriver just to kind of seat that hose a little bit. But I think uh, we're going to have to replace that. So we've got coolant in it. We'll go ahead and let it run. It'll have to run for a little while to get things leveled out. Then we'll back it outside, let it get up to operating temperature. And we'll see if we can't get it to do a regen because that is the original problem that we had here. So the water pump was 1200 and some dollars. Thermostats were 190, I think. And this water pump here is black. The original one was green. And then for a while they were yellow. And I kind of thought that when they had them yellow was about the time they started advising everybody to, you know, swap these out every so often. And I don't know. They're black now, so black is more of a universal color. And um, I know there was a thread on one of these Facebook pages a while ago that no one knew why their water pumps were yellow. Well, some of them are used in construction equipment as well, and with them black, they're more universal. So let's go ahead and get it started up. We'll let it run for a hot minute. Check everything over, make sure we don't have any leaks. We just kind of screwed that up, but they ended up pulling a display out of this. When they put the 95, when they switched tractors here, and it just told me it recognized that a display was removed. What I was going to tell you is it looks as though we are doing good as far as it wanting to do a regen because it originally had a problem where it wouldn't allow one and it's doing uh, one here right now. And uh, I'm gonna shut this down here in a second because I don't know how long this is gonna take and I don't need to have this doing a regen inside the building. If this thing were to catch on fire, we'd be better off just letting it burn outside. <laughs> um, we don't need it, in other words, we don't need it to uh, burn the shop down. So we'll show you here it is going through a parked filter cleaning. It's about halfway. We'll just go ahead and abort that, showing it on the display. It should abort. Maybe if I put it in gear, I'll abort it. It's running at 1900 RPMs. Well, it doesn't want to abort. So I'm going to shut this off because I want to check the coolant level anyways. And um, then we can roll this outside and do the park cleaning out there. There it goes, I was able to abort it by letting the tractor move. So, we'll go ahead and check 
our coolant level get that topped up and get this thing outside let it do a regen out there and then we will be good um, yeah everything is good well all right we'll get this pulled outside to a parked regen on it and then we can get working on these row units here so that is gonna do it for this one i want to thank everybody for watching and we'll catch you at the next one